Okay guys, so today I wanna to talk about the ESCs that are going in our board and how we're gonna house everything. Um, okay, so last in the, in the last video I had some updates um, personally and business wise, and I told you guys that I would update you guys on the production boards, keep you guys in the loop as far as behind the scenes and our design process and bringing that board to production. So today I do wanna talk about our ESCs and how we're gonna house them in our boards. I think that's like a little, it's, it's a subtle but important feature, I think, of our boards. Before we started this whole design process, I did make a pros and cons list of, you know, the good things and the bad things about building boards and about buying boards. And one of the great things about buying a board is when you open everything up, uh, many times the battery and the ESC look really, really nicely made. Everything is very clean, it's organized, it's beautiful inside. Con about building is many times you open up your enclosure, there's your battery, and then there's just like a rat's nest of cables and ESCs, and it kind of looks like a mess. So I wanted to make a tray of some kind. I've literally made like three different versions. So pretty much this tray would keep all of our ESCs nicely intact. So they would kind of just like, the ESCs would kind of just sit in here, or if you had a single motor version, one would be vacant, ready for your next one. And then there'd be a couple different cable routing and management things on the inside like this, which looks really nice. But then once I got it in our prototype board, I just thought it just looked still messy. So then I started playing around with a completely enclosed case version, which would be which would have a lid and it would have two places for the uh, ESCs. There'd be a place for USB cables, power button, and all that. But I realized that this was kind of expensive to make, like 3D printing filament is not the cheapest. Um, this would be about $4 with the lid and everything, which is a lot for a case. Like that, we're just adding cases. So I also felt like the 3D printing didn't look as nice as I wanted it to. So tomorrow we're going to be making a wooden version with our laser cutter. So this version would take about 13 hours to print this and the lid. Whereas the version we're gonna hopefully make tomorrow on our out of wood and uh, our laser cutter, it will take about 10 to 20 minutes, which is way better than 13 hours. So as soon as we get to work tomorrow, we're gonna start working on a wooden version and getting our first prototype wood case done. Are you ready, bud? Ready for work? Let's go. Good boy. Come on. Hi. Okay, so like I said yesterday, hi Dexter, how you doing? Anyway, so like I said yesterday, we on we want to make a wood version of this. So we found a, a great tool. Um, I found it like about a year ago. You plug in the dimensions of a box that you want to make, and it will come up with designs on how to laser cut it. So you just download the designs with the exact parameters that you want. And then it all just like clips together. So we're gonna try this. I pulled it into Illustrator already and kind of put it onto our piece of wood. So now we're going to send it to the laser cutter and we'll see how it looks. Pretty much it's gonna start out being a piece of wood. We'll just kind of throw this in there. Good. And then we'll load up our design and we'll get cutting. We've got our design loaded up. This is the 3D printed version, which in comparison takes 13 hours to print this alongside of a lid. This is about to take us nine minutes and be about half the cost in material. So, and here we go. Okay, so this is our final product. Let's see, as long as everything cut properly, which it looks like it did. So now we have our five different pieces. All right. Bam, nine minutes. So now we can assemble these. Okay, so this is the bottom. Then these just kind of clip in together. I'm pretty sure I'll have to figure out exactly how it goes. Yeah, there we go, okay. So then we have our box. It looks pretty good. Okay, so I brought the box home. Um, well, this is the back, but um, so the box design itself, it's literally just a generated box. I didn't actually design anything. I just plugged my numbers in and spit out a generic looking box. So now I have to go through and place my objects or components in the case 
decide where they're gonna go, and then make custom cutouts for the phase wires, the positive and negative uh, terminal of our ESC itself, um, cut notches out for different cables, like sensor cables and stuff. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going through my caliber tool, measuring everything and figuring out where I want it to go, plugging it into the design, and then hopefully when we cut it out of a new fresh piece of wood, it'll have all the proper holes for all the different cables. So that way when we put all the components in, it all fits properly and the cables are able to exit the case properly to interact with all the other components of our board. So anyways, going through that right now, so hopefully it goes well, uh, we'll see. So for example, the red line is literally just cut lines. The black is where we're gonna have a little bit of engraving. So right here, for example, I just want our laser cutter to cut out notches so our positive and negative cables can leave properly. Also over cut this finger joint right here a bit so that way we can take a connector out of here. And over here we'll have another box cut out of it so we can literally access the um, USB without having to take the whole thing apart, which would be awesome. And then we also really want the phase wires to look really clean. So right here I have added holes so the phase wires can leave on each vest and hopefully it'll be properly spaced. And then here on this board, I've kind of laid out where I want everything as well. So then all of this will be scored or engraved into the back plate so that way when it's time to assemble, we know exactly where every little thing wants to go. So hopefully that looks good and it all works out. Okay, hoping this is our last cut right here. Okay, so this is the final lid. So last night I went in and I glued up all of the different um, 3D printed pieces. I inserted all of the components into here. So we have our two vests, we have our dual vest adapter, we have our power switch, and then the, a little port for our power, actual power button to connect to. Um, so that all looks really nice. I think this whole thing will get a little smaller once we um, customize all these cables to be the right length so it's not so crowded in here. Then we got our lid, which is simply just goes over the top and then attaches with two screw holes, and then there's a spot for our two um, sensor cables. So after that, it'll literally look super nice inside the board. I feel like it looks clean. Um, we'll have to test, do some tests with thermals, make sure nothing's overheating inside, which it shouldn't. The heat sinks are pretty nice on these, but uh, everything looks really good. So if you guys have any suggestions or um, comments or criticisms of any kind, constructive please <laughs> um let me know because i'd love to make a version two of this and make it a little nicer but for right now this will look a lot nicer when you open your board uh, it'll looking like this than if this is all just kind of thrown in the enclosure so hopefully that makes sense and hopefully you guys had a good time watching us design this and all that so um we'll be moving on to a different part of the board very soon and uh Work on working just designing and producing some other aspect of the board soon so subscribe for that and uh, we'll see you in the next one